So we're going to go ahead here and get started. What you see on my screen is just the login information into the vision system. So I'm quickly going to come in here and log in. And once I log into the vision system, I'm going to arrive at the dashboard. And the dashboard is just my landing page within the vision system. And you can see some various windows. So I can see kind of what's going on within my system. I, I have featured products window, which is where I can go in and research products to put on my quotes, presentations, and my sales orders. So I can go in and view all and do some product research. I also can get to product research by going up here to the navigation toolbar and accessing the products overview. And that will take me into the product research section. We do have a webinar and a video on product research, so I do ask that you take a look at that. Uh, also, one of the windows is the monthly sales report that you see here. If you click on view all, it will give you a view into all the reports that you have available to you on the system. Mainly, we have customer reports, prospect reports, and then any type of report throughout the order cycle. And when I say the or order cycle, we have projects. So you can pull up a project report. You can also look at all the quotes on the system. You can look at the sales orders on the system, purchase orders, invoices, and so forth. So anything that you would find in a typical order cycle, that is one of the reports uh, that you can run re on. The other thing that you see on the dashboard is just some of your latest projects that you've created. I'm in the training database, so some of the data that you see here is going to be a little bit wonky just because it's something that we use for testing and for training. You're also going to see some information down here at the bottom of the page, company performance and quick stats. Company performance is going to take a look at your projects on the system. If you have universal access and you have other employees working for you within your company, you would see the company performance from everybody. If you have individual access, you're only going to see your own performance as a salesperson. So it just depends on the permissions that are set. But you can see that I'm signed in as myself and you can see you know, some of the performance that I've done uh, based on the projects that I've done in this system. Quick Stats is looking at more of that conversion rate. So today we're going to be looking at going into a sales order and converting that to an invoice and sending that invoice out to the customer. So you can see also quotes that you have on the system, how many are pending or actually converted over to sales orders and authorized with that customer. So, you know, there's various uh, stats you can pull out of the system. And the final window here that you see is the task window. There's a calendar within our system and that's kind of tied into the customer relationship management that you have available to you within Vision. And this calendar allows you to put different activities on it. And if you've assigned yourself an activity or if someone else has assigned you an activity, such as a phone call or a meeting pertaining to a customer or a quote, that would show up in that task area. So again, this is just your landing page when you come into Vision. Because invoicing is the final step of the order cycle, uh, hopefully you've kind of watched and attended some of the other webinars on product research and then creating that sales order and purchase orders, and then we finally get to the point where we get to invoice the customer. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is from this project's drop down on the navigation toolbar, you can see that if I go into Projects Overview, this is going to be a list of all the projects I have on the system. And just a reminder of what a project is, every time you have anything that you need to do for a customer, you're typically going to, as your first step, open a project or create a project. And again, a project is a virtual file folder maintained on the Vision system. And within that project folder, you might have a quote, a presentation. You're definitely going to have a sales order and you're going to have purchase orders and an invoice related to that project. So the first step is creating that project and then the second step, if you're in the actual order, 
is to create that sales order for your customer based upon what they want to order, uh, products, decoration, and so forth. So the projects overview that I'm in right now just shows me an overview of all my projects. Now I can go into each project and see where that order is at. So if I come in here to the first one, I can see within this project that I did for the Anaheim Hills Little League, I have a sales order. So my sales order had these two products. Then I have two purchase orders, one for the tank, one for the bag. And then I haven't generated an invoice yet. So this would be a good project for us to go into today and, and generate an invoice for this particular Anaheim Hills Little League. So I can access information from that project or project folder. I also could just go into projects and go straight into my sales orders. So if I'm getting ready to invoice a customer and there's a sales order on the system, I just have to look up that sales order number. I can also search by customer name. So if I had Anaheim Hills Little League, I can just show sales orders pertaining to that Anaheim Hills Little League. And I can see the status. Okay. So again, I can pop into the sales order and immediately just open that sales order with that tank top and bag. Okay. So here's the sales order that was put together for the, the Anaheim Hills Little League. And I'm going to pull up the sales order because every time we raise an invoice, we raise it based on the sales order. The sales order is what the customer agreed to order. It's what they acknowledged. And from that sales order, you placed your purchase orders with the vendor. But then when it comes to invoicing, you need to go back and make sure you raise the invoice from the sales order. Now, you can make adjustments based upon what was delivered. So if you ordered 1,000 pins and you only are delivering 900 because there were some errors in the printing, you can go back into the invoice and adjust that invoice to reflect that. Or you can adjust the sales order before raising the invoice. So either way, I typically would just adjust the invoice. So in this case, we've got if the customer has a PO, that would be entered on the sales order. We have our in-hands date, which is the date that they need the products by. And sales tax is going to be looking at the customer's address. So if I take a look at the shipping, it's going to Tracy Payton, and it says that it's going to be shipped to multiple shipping destinations. So the information, if it is being shipped to multiple uh, destinations, you would enter those destinations right here in the additional information. So maybe the tote is shipped to Patrick Butte, and he's at 8266 East Canyon Court, and that's Anaheim, California 92808. So the tote's being shipped to that, and then maybe the, the ladies tank and ship to the contact here, Tracy Payton, and they're going to be at 30 Tree Lane in Anaheim. Okay, so you have two destinations for those to be shipped to. Okay, and that'll pull through onto the purchase order for those suppliers. So if it's a direct ship from the supplier to the customer, they know where to ship it to. So on the sales order, we've got the jute bag and the tote, 100, and we've got um, 100 of the, the transfer, uh, the logo. And then we also have only five lavender smalls. So we have here the actual order here that was been approved. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up to this next button and we're just simply going to generate the sales invoice. 
it will immediately let you know an invoice has been created and it will pull open the invoice for you. So the invoice looks very similar to the sales order form. There are going to be things that you can edit on this uh, and there are going to be things that you're locked out of. On a sales order you can add product, you can in, do some other things. Here you can add an additional cost. So if I wanted to put the shipping cost on here, I could come up here to additional cost and I could say add a shipping. Oh, it added two. Sorry, I got a little... There we go. So then I could just do a one-time cost for shipping and if I want to do the cost to, the, to me was $15 but I'm going to charge them 30 and tab through here and it will populate that one-time charge and be added to that actual invoice. Again, maybe the lady's um, shirt, they or maybe in here the tote, there was some issues with the tote and we only were able to provide 90 totes. So we only want to invoice them for 90 totes. So we'll also have to adjust that, that transfer location. I don't know what that cost was on that, so I'm just going to enter something in here. Okay, so we'll put that in there. Okay, so we've got that charge. So here's our invoice. You can come in here, you can click into these fields, you can make the changes on the cost in the cell. You can add additional costs such as uh, setup, maybe there was an art charge, maybe there was something that was not foreseen and you want to add that into the invoice. You can do so as long as your invoice has not been printed or sent to the customer. Once you do that, it becomes an official document. So in order to make any edits to that invoice, you would have to cancel and void out the invoice and generate a new one. So just letting you know. So here we've made our changes prior to printing or sending it to the customer. Some things I want to take a look at is I want to take make sure that it's being shipped to the correct place. And so we've got it there. And there's my billing contact and I should have a billing address associated with that but I don't think there is one in the customer record so when you're setting up the customer record of course you're going to be putting contacts in with their addresses so if you'd like you can go ahead and take a look at what that invoice looks like so if I go over to design view that's going to show you a PDF of that invoice so you'll see your customer logo at the top you'll see your logo your customer information, order number, uh, invoice number, and then just kind of a summary as what's being invoiced. And you'll see your balance due and your additional information. So this is a table view. If I was to roll up any of that additional like imprint methods, if I was to roll that up, I could exclude zero line items and then you wouldn't see the color transfer and the setup and stuff. You would just see the total quantity and the total price that was being charged. So it just depends. Uh, in this situation I did break it out so that the customer knows exactly what they're paying for. Okay. So, and you can go to the next page to see the, the complete invoice. So this generates a PDF for that customer. So if I go back into the edit mode, I can now come over here to next and if I'm happy with the invoice, I can go ahead and send it to the customer or print it out and give it to them. So if I come in here to send and share, it's going to pull up an email with that customer contact information. It doesn't have that customer in the system, so I apologize for the kind of dummy data that we have in here. But it will generate the PDF. It will populate the customer email and then you could type in the body of the email whatever you'd like so you could say please find you know invoice such and such you know uh, 30 day payment you know terms or something like that so um, you can provide that in the body of the email 
and then just click send and that will send that PDF to the customer so they'll receive that invoice. I'm going to cancel out of this. So now if I go ahead and I go back and I take a look at my project, if I go into project overview and I now take a look at this project, it now has the status that it's been invoiced. So if I pull open the project by clicking on the project number, I can see there's my sales order, there's my two purchase orders, and there's my invoice. So it says that it's been printed, so basically it's been printed, but it just hasn't been paid yet. So you can go ahead and pay that invoice. If it was an invoice that uh, was incorrect, you could raise a credit note for the amount that was incorrect. So you have those that ability. You also can come up just like you did with sales orders and you can look at sales invoices. So you can just pull up a specific invoice if you know the invoice number. You don't have to go into the project. So you can see all the invoices, all the credits on your system. Again, there's a reporting functionality that will allow you to print uh, reports based upon the invoice status. Okay, so there's the one we did right here at the top. And then you also, those that are fully paid, you can check and then you can see the fully paid invoices. Now in order to cancel a sales invoice, you just need to highlight that invoice from within this area and then you can cancel that invoice. It's only going to cancel invoices and allow you to cancel invoices that have not been printed. So you, the, the cancel button will only show, you won't be able to cancel an invoice that's been printed or paid, or I'm sorry, printed, paid, or sent, because again, it's that official document, so you'll have to raise a credit note against that invoice. So that's uh, invoicing in a nutshell. <laughs> Um, again, if you go into the reporting area, you have reports that you can run. And the report area for invoicing would be selecting sales invoices. And then you have some details that you can report on. So you can see invoices that are outstanding, invoices raised. I can say, show me invoices due to pay. And I can say, show me it for this month. And I can view that report. And so those are the invoices that are due to pay this month and I can see those. And that's under the reports area. So if you have any questions, I can take a look at that at this time. But if uh, I've recorded this video or webinar, so you can go ahead and view that if you'd like, and I'll post it on our training website. If you come over here to www.tradeonly.com, we have a training tab up here in the top right, but if you click on that, it will take you to our training website, and you can see here that we have several resources available to you. We have classroom training that you can come into our offices and do a two-day training masterclass with us. So we cover all the, all the process of vision as well as store, which is our website product. We also have personal one-on-one -on -one training that you can sign up for. So if you need to sign up for a personal one-on-one -on -one training, you can click on that and we will contact you and do an online hour training with you on a, a specific function of the system. We have webinars, both recorded and live webinars that you can view. And we also have video tutorials to view as well. And we also have help sheets. So on Vision, if I click on the Vision help sheets, you have access to a couple page document with screenshots showing you how to do a function in. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it and have a good day.